Last week I showed you how to mic a cajon. This week I'm gonna show you how to mix it. Let's get started. Let's get right into it. I got this session pulled up here. It's a live performance by my band, The Follow Through. Doing a little acoustic set. This is actually a cover of Change by the Deftones. So we got vocal, acoustic guitar, and cajon. Pretty simple setup here. If you watched last week's video, How to Mic a Cajon, I used the D112 on the front of the cajon mic technique. If you didn't watch it, go back and check that out. So I have a, a cajon high channel, a cajon low channel here, and then a cajon bus. But since I just used one microphone, I just duplicated one of these channels. So these waves are exactly the same. And then I'm just gonna throw a crossover on them to make them uh, into the low and the high. Real quick before I do that, let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like in the mix so you get an idea of the final product. That is a big old cajon. I like it. I like my cajones big. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and bypass everything. Boop, and a boop, and boop, there we go. All right, everything's bypassed. Now let's listen to it with everything bypassed, just the naked cajon in solo. So still sounds good, but not nearly as huge as with everything in there. So let's go ahead and start here at these REQs. These are gonna be my crossovers, how I turn the cone low into the low and the high into the high. So on the high one, I have a high pass here at 200 Hertz. And then on the low, of course I have a low cut because I put that on everything. Uh, everything below 30 Hertz is cut out. I don't need any of that. You're not gonna be able to hear it anyways. But then I have this low pass here at 100 Hertz. So you'll notice my crossovers aren't at the same frequency. I have one at 100 and one at 200. So I'm actually cutting out everything in between there. And when I was mixing, I just decided I didn't really like how those frequencies were sounding in the mix. So just cut them all out. Um, if I was doing something less rock, more natural, maybe some worship or some Latin music or something like that, I would probably leave all that in there and go for a, a more mid-rangey sound, but for the rock, I, I really wanted this to sound really big and fill out all that low end below the acoustic guitar. So let's just hear what it sounds like with these EQs in real quick. I'll leave them bypassed at first and then bring them in. So already kind of cleaner sounding, taking out that one to 200 hertz range. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this, the, the low pass up to 200 and AB that for you so you can hear what that sounds like. Yeah, so it's really just cutting out a lot of that boxiness that's just kind of inherent to the cajon, uh, cleaning it up a little bit, making it, giving some space down there for that acoustic guitar to fill in. Hey, you ever seen a dog on a cajon before? Probably not. You should subscribe, hit that bell button, like, comment, all that stuff. Now back to me. So up next on the cajon high channel, I have the Smack Attack plugin. That's a transient designer. You could use um, a, a standard compressor, but the Cajon Transient is not as, as large as like a, a snare drum or a tom or any of those things. So for cases like this, I like to use a Transient Designer. And essentially what it does is you set this threshold right here with these lines, and then anything that goes above that threshold, uh, it just emphasizes bringing out that Transient. And if you don't know what a Transient is, it's the very front edge of a wave. So if I zoom in right here, this very front edge where he's hitting the cajon, that's the transient and that's what gives the, the attack. 
So let's listen to it when I bring it in. Yeah, so again, just exaggerating those transients, making that kind of snare sound pop out a little bit more. Really like this Mac Attack and what it's doing. That's all I have on the Cajon High. Let's move on to the Cajon Low. So after that REQ, I have a gate, and I'm using the gate to control the resonant frequency or just kind of how the uh, that fundamental resonates in the Cajon. I did a whole in-depth tutorial on how to set up your gate to do this for Cajon, Djembe, Toms, Kick, all that. So make sure you go and check that out. I'll link it at the end. Um, but I'll show you kind of an AB after we get everything in, because right now it's a little bit subtle, but once you compress it a lot, you really hear that low end just rumble. And so once we get through everything, I'll come back to the compressor and we'll listen to it. Up next, we have the Torque. Now this is a pitch shifter. Uh, this is kind of the, the secret sauce to at least this song. You see that I have negative 335 cents. That's right, I'm bringing the fundamental frequency of the low end down by over three octaves here. And uh, again, that's just to really fill out that low end to, to make the mix sound bigger because it's just a vocal acoustic guitar and a cajon. And the acoustic guitar and cajon kind of occupy the same range. So by bringing that fundamental down, it's, it's occupying its own range and getting out of the way of the acoustic guitar. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah, so that is really exaggerating the boom, the bottom end of that cajon. It is not subtle <laughs> at all, but I like what it's doing. Again, uh, it, it really gets it out of the way of that acoustic guitar. Uh, it, again, if I was doing something like Latin music, something worshipy, something a little bit more stripped down and, and natural sounding, I would just skip the torque altogether. It still sounds good without it, just not as, as deep. So onto the CLA 76. Again, I'm compressing that low end because now that I have it super boomy and exaggerated, I wanna make sure that it's held really steady right in place and that each hit is consistent. So I have an eight to one ratio on there, uh, a slightly slower attack and a pretty fast release time. Uh, let's, let's see what that's doing to it. Yeah, so you'll see I am pegging that meter. It's getting all the way up there to, to 20, negative 20 dB of, of gain reduction occasionally. So it's doing a lot, but it's really locking the low end in place. Uh, there's a clear volume difference. It's kind of bringing the, the volume of that boom down a little bit, but it's keeping it really consistent, which I really like. Uh, and then finally, the R bass. And since we brought the low end or the, the fundamental frequency so low now, there's a chance that in smaller speakers, you may not be able to hear that boom. And so what the R bass does is it creates harmonics above that fundamental frequency that it then stacks on top so that when you're hearing it on smaller speakers, you hear those harmonics. It makes you think that you're hearing a lot of that lower end. So it just kind of emphasizes that lower end. So let's, let's hear what that's doing. Yeah, so it's taking the, the, the big kick sound, the, the bassy sound, and bringing it up to a slightly more audible range there. Um, really like the R bass. You'll find that a lot of times on bass guitars and kick drums, things like that, that you wanna beef up. So that's it for my Cajon Low channel. Now we go on to my Cajon Bus, uh, where I'm now processing everything together. 
So the first thing I have in there is this HEQ. It's one of my favorite EQs. Uh, doing a high shelf in there and then a boost around 3K, uh, which is really emphasizing the, the attack. And then again, taking out some more of those mids, some of that boxiness. Um, I'll bring this EQ in and then I'll go through the bands, solo the bands so you hear exactly what I'm doing there. Let's hear it. Yeah, so huge difference with the HEQ in there, just bringing it to life, brightening up the whole thing. Again, that 3K really emphasizing those snares that are in the cajon as well, making it sound, uh, bringing that attack out a little bit more. Uh, you'll notice that's, that's kind of what I'm doing the whole time. I'm trying to emphasize the attack and make that low end super consistent. So we're hitting now another CLA 76 that's compressing the two of them together. That's going to kind of glue those sounds together and I, I have a slightly slower attack that's going to let that transient through again to, to emphasize that. I got a four to one ratio and a super fast release time. I'm going to bypass it and then bring it in. Yeah, again, making a pretty big difference there. Occasionally hitting up close to like negative seven decibels of gain reduction. So it's a, a decent amount of compression, uh, but just really energizing it even more. So it's sounding good, but now it just needs, it just needs that tiny little bit just to get it over the edge. And that's where one of my favorite plugins, the soft tube saturation knob comes in. The saturation is just going to add a little bit of, of uh, saturation, some slight distortion to it. And then that's just going to kind of give it a little bit of extra life. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unsolo it, bring in the whole mix, let you hear what it sounds like without the saturation, and then bring in the saturation knob so you hear it with the saturation and uh, hear what it's doing in the mix. Yeah, love what it's doing there. Really helps it stand out in the mix and injects just that last little bit of life. Uh, it's now sounding awesome, um, sitting right where I want it to in the mix. Now that I have all that compression on there though, let's go back and listen to what that gate's doing. So again, you'll hear it take it from that just constant kind of rumble when it's bypassed to a more short, emphasized low end uh, once I bring it in and you can always watch this gain reduction meter if you want to see exactly what it's doing So I'm gonna bypass it and then solo up the cajon and bring it in Yeah, I mean it really takes it from like a just a constant rumble to, to a boom 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 uh, when he's actually hitting that kick sound on the cajon. So that's doing a lot to clear up a lot of the, the mid and just kind of low rumble in the mix and, and just making it sound a lot clearer and more emphasized. I'm going to leave a link to the full video performance of Change by the follow through in the description below. Make sure you guys check it out. Let me know what you think and give us a follow over there. Also, now that you've watched how to mix a cajon, if you haven't already seen it, Go watch my previous video on how to mic a cajon and also check out that full tutorial on how to properly gate it to control the resonance on your cajon, djembe, or any other drum. Once you have all that down, you'll have awesome sounding cajons for the rest of your life. We'll see you next time. If you can, hit the subscribe button and notification bell 
It does a lot to help the channel grow. <laughs>